was State Senator John Erpenbach from the great state of Wisconsin. One of the senators, some people in the media call them AWOL, I call them filibusterers. Uh, Senator Erpenbach, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Senator Fitzgerald, the one of the more prominent Republicans in your state, recently had this to say about what Scott Walker's agenda really was. If we win this battle and uh, the money is, is not there under the auspices of the unions, uh, certainly what you're going to find is President Obama is going to have a much, difficult, a much more difficult time uh, getting elected and, and winning the state of Wisconsin. How do you think the average Wisconsinite uh, feels, and, I'm, and, uh, and how do you feel about being part of you know this whole thing? Apparently, being part of a plan to not to 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 you know de-elect or uh, you know defeat President Obama in 2012. Well, first of all, Tom, it just makes me sick to hear Senator Fitzgerald say that. I thought this was about balancing Wisconsin's. I thought this was trying to bring fiscal responsibility to the state. It certainly was not about union busting, and it wasn't about taking away workers' rights. That had nothing to do with balancing. The Apparently, it is. And, and what we saw yesterday was uh, a peek beneath the veil of, of the Republican agenda. And, and the sad thing is, Tom, it's not Wisconsin's agenda. It's, it's some sort of national agenda cooked up by a bunch of corporate bigwigs who want to privatize the state and pick up the contracts. And if Senator Fitzgerald um, he has that much of a problem with President Obama, then he shouldn't run for state senator. He should run against President Obama. Yeah, in, in the end, <laughs> well a, lot of, a lot of people in the state of Wisconsin last night got burned. Yeah. They were lied to. Uh, they were misled. And in the end, uh, what happened last night was the Republicans didn't walk up to a sleeping dog and nudge it awake. They kicked it in the butt. Mm. And I don't think they are aware of, uh, of what's going to hit them here real soon. What do you think is next, and are you and the other 14, 13 senators who are exercising your constitutional option to to deny a quorum to the Republicans, essentially, what, as I said, I call it a filibuster, um, mm -hmm. uh, what are you guys going to do? There's all these rumors flying around. Right. Um, well, uh, what we're going to do uh, a little bit later today is, is get together, and we're going to talk about uh, the options that we have in front of us. One of the things we're keeping a very close eye on is, first of all, when they met last night, uh, there might be talk of violating Wisconsin's open meetings laws, which is a very important law on the books in the state. And the lawyers are taking a look at that. But we do know that if we were to go back today, nothing is stopping the Republicans from calling us in. Uh, having the state troopers round us up um, and calling the House and locking us in the chambers and voting on the entire bill after they reinsert the language. So right. we're very aware of, of what they possibly can do. Obviously, we don't trust them because what they did last night, they're on record as saying they would never do. Um, so right. in the end, we've got a few options. We just need to talk about them and see where we want to go from here. Well, you know, the Republicans in the United States Senate filibustered President Obama and the Democrats on practically everything that they wanted to do for a full two mm -hmm. years. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, although they didn't well, suffer the discomfort uh, that you guys are. Yeah, well, this is the way we have to look at it. Rules are different in each state. The rules in the state of Wisconsin say that in order to vote on a fiscal item, you have to have 20 members uh, present in the state Senate. Those right. are the rules. Right. Um, we did not break a state law. We did not violate any rules of the state Senate. They left us with no option because they were ramming this through in less than a week. They left us no option because they weren't going to debate it. They were going to limit amendments. They were going to do all sorts of things to try and get this to Governor Walker's desk as quickly as they could. So we were left with no option. So we are exercising our right to, number one, stand up for hundreds of thousands of people throughout the state of Wisconsin, but also giving people a chance to see what was in this thing. And it is a real piece of crap, let me tell you. Yeah. So people found out what the reason why so many people are rallying around the Capitol in Madison and uh, throughout the streets in Wisconsin is because people actually took time to read the budget repair bill, and they were astonished. And we didn't ask them to come out; they just showed up. What so, are some of the things that are in this so-called budget repair bill that now no longer has anything to do with the budget? Uh, yeah. At least the version that was passed last night, they had to strip the budget out of it so that they could pass it. Right. What are what are some of the things in there that you take greatest offense with, Senator? Well, I chaired the health committee in Wisconsin for a number of years. Uh, I take great uh, a deal of of, of uh, 
satisfaction in, in getting at least through the state senate a universal health insurance plan for the state of Wisconsin that died in the assembly. I mean, that, that, so health care and health insurance is a very important thing to me, especially the programs that we have adopted in Wisconsin on a very strong bipartisan support, like Badger Care, yep. which ensures low-income kids and their, and their families. Senior Care, which helps our senior citizens who built our schools and built our roads with their prescription drug costs. What Governor Walker does in the budget repair bill is he takes the authority away from the legislature, and he, and only he, is allowed to rewrite the rules without any legislative oversight, without any legislative okay, and he has the ability to say who will be eligible and who will not be eligible. So what he's going to do is he's going to try and get as many people off of those programs as he possibly can to try and save the money, uh, to try and and show whoever he's trying to prove at, at the national level that he is a tough guy. Uh, so there, there are people we know, people we grew up with in the state of Wisconsin, who for one reason or another, another are eligible for these programs, and we worked hard to get these programs. And we got these programs under Democrat and Republican governors, and with one swipe of the pen, he can take off thousands of people. That's so, in so in order to pay for his tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires and corporations, literally you could see people dying in Wisconsin? Well, you certainly can see people going without health care, and so, so then, the, or, or senior citizens. I'm not kidding you. Cutting prescription, actually cutting a pill in half yeah. to try and make their prescription last. Another thing that he put in there was he can take state assets like our power plants and sell them. And normally it's to the highest that usually right. the way government works. He can sell them on his own to whoever he wants to with absolutely no oversight. Amazing. Wisconsin State so, Senator John Erpenbach, thank you so much, sir, for the service you are providing to your state and to the nation by standing up with your bravery. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it.